One of the very finest of native trees in North Carolina that's often used as an ornamental for landscaping is the redbud tree, Circus canadensis. At the NCSU Arboretum, we've got the largest collection of redbuds in the world, and we'd like to kind of share some of the variety of this group that most people have not seen or not familiar with. The native species grows from an area from Texas to Florida to New York over to Wisconsin. Very widespread species. It's very tough, it's hardy, it's durable, it's drought tolerant, and it's, of course, noted for the sort of lavender magenta flowers that come early in the spring before most other plants come out in this area. Seen probably at its best in North Carolina when it's growing with uh, black red cedars out in fields which accentuate that color. Almost everybody thinks of red buds almost exclusively in terms of a flowering tree. But what we want to do today is try to illustrate that some of the new varieties that are coming into the marketplace and other species from other countries are introducing this plant to us now as a foliage plant in addition to just uh, the flowering plant that we've thought of. For example, if we come over here and take a look at this tree behind me, we see this white variegated foliage that's so dramatic. Now, many people look at flowering trees only for their flowers, but usually that's for a short period of a week or 10 days at any given time of the year. But foliage is there for many months. So choosing a plant for this interest gives you a longer season of particular focus. Now, this one is called silver cloud. It was originally found uh, in Tennessee and is rarely in the nursery industry. You can find it with a little bit of hunting. And there are others as well, and I'd like to go through and illustrate a few of these uh, that we have in our collection, and many of these are in the commercial trade as well. Another very dramatic one is this purple foliage one called forest pansy. Again, years ago it was found as a seedling variant among millions of seedlings in the nursery industry and selected for this color. It's a very appealing plant um, in that it is at its best in the spring when most people are shopping for these plants, deep, deep purple foliage. Now, the intensity of the color on this foliage is proportional to light, so you need to have it planted in full sunlight to get the best color, and also for temperature. Cool temperatures will accentuate the color, and so it's at its best in the early spring. In much of the Piedmont and coastal areas of North Carolina, where it gets very hot in the summertime, Often this will fade back to green foliage by midsummer and into the fall. In the mountains, it will tend to keep, keep its color and do very, very nicely uh, throughout the summer in those areas. Now, another direction that one might uh, look at is a difference in terms of texture now, uh, and color of the leaf. Here we see the normal species, Circus canadensis. So you'd see it's sort of a pale um, and rather dull sort of a surface. But if you look at this leaf by contrast, uh, here we have a very shiny, glossy, thick, leathery leaf. This leaf has a texture you'd almost think of it as a broadleafed evergreen, but it, it still, of course, is a deciduous tree. This is a variety called Oklahoma. It was named that because it was originally found growing wild in the mountains of, of Oklahoma and selected and propagated by nurserymen. In addition to having this wonderful foliage, and it is so good that one would grow it as a landscape plant even if it never flowered, it also has probably the best flowers of any red bud. It's a deep, deep magenta purple, almost red in its coloration. Another variation on that same theme, which gives you this same magnificent foliage, a little bit paler in this case, a little bit larger. This is a variety called Texas White. It has the large, glossy, thick, leathery foliage. And again, this is an evolutionary thing in nature to make them more drought resistant out in the dry Texas, Oklahoma plains. But in addition, this one has pure white flowers. And in many cases where red buds may be a problem with certain kinds of magenta against red brick, the white is often safer to use or if you have a place where you're going to use it for night use around a patio where you have night lighting, white always shows up very nicely at that time as well. Another variation on this theme is uh, one that we've introduced and is in the trade here because of our efforts. It is very similar to the previous two in that it has glossy foliage, but the leaves are smaller. They have a wavy, undulate margin. And this is the Mexican redbud coming out of the high mountains of Mexico. It has proved to be completely hardy here in this area. The typical magenta flowers, and it's a little smaller tree, a little finer texture, but again, a very, very beautiful plant. Now, all of these that I've mentioned are available in the North Carolina nursery trade. They're not at every place because red buds are a little more difficult to propagate than most other plants. For example, another fine flowering native tree, the uh, Cornus Florida or flowering dogwood, is hundreds of cultivars that are available everywhere, but they root easily from cuttings. 
Red buds have to be budded in a process that's very difficult and few nurserymen can do them. So you'll have to hunt for them, but they are there and they're worth the effort. You'll enjoy them. And long range, there are many others coming. I've just been talking about the American red buds. We're also working with European and Asian red buds. And as one just example of kind of a frontier, this uh, plant, which has this enormous leaf, a very vigorous large plant, is appropriately named Circus gigantea, the giant red bud from China. We have the only plant of this in America in our garden, and we're learning how to propagate it, and maybe someday it will be out there with the rest of them. And there's an entire other world of red buds behind those as well.